So a client brought me this computer and what he told me it's doing is that after about 10 or 15 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes of being on, the computer would just shut off. Just lose power completely and turn itself off. So what I did was I hooked it up and I turned the computer on and ran it for a little while just to confirm that it is doing what he says it's doing, which is powering off after a certain period of time, and sure enough it did. So, I've got the case open. The most likely cause of a computer just powering off after being on for a period of time is the processor overheating. And the processor on this desktop computer is just underneath this heatsink. Now I can see that there's a lot of dust built up, so the, the air is supposed to be coming through this uh, heatsink cooler and um, so much dust is built up it's uh, probably not having a lot of luck moving the air through. Now I'm reaching down and I'm touching the heat sink and it's just barely warm and if I move the cooler it appears to be attached well. So I've turned the computer back on and what I'm going to do is check and see how hot the CPU is actually getting. I'm going to use a program called Ida 64. I'll go to the downloads and get the extreme version. And you install it just the standard way you install any other program. I've already got it installed. This is what it looks like. So to check the CPU temperature I'll go to tools and system stability test. So this lets you test the stability of the processor and the memory as well as the GPU or graphics card. And it's showing while the computer is just sitting idle, the CPU is somewhere in the low to mid 50s. And that's a little higher than usual. Ideally you want your CPU when the computer is not doing anything to be in the high 30s to mid 40s. But still this is nowhere near to the point where it would shut the computer down this processor can go up to 100 degrees Celsius before the computer powers itself off and it's nowhere near that. What I'm going to do is start the stress test on the CPU and the memory and see how high it gets. So the CPU usage just went from a few percentage points all the way to 100 percent and the temperatures are starting to rise. So it's getting up to the mid to high 70s. And if I let this run for another 15 minutes, it might go on up another 5 or 10 degrees. But even with the CPU running at 100%, it's not going to get anywhere near the 100 degrees Celsius it would take to power the computer off. I'll go ahead and stop the test. So I've powered the computer back off again. The next most likely cause of the computer powering off after a period of time is a problem with the power supply. And the power supply takes the electricity from the wall in through right here using this cable and converts it from AC to DC and these cables here run around and give power to all the components. So there's a possibility this is failing. Now whether it's the CPU overheating or the power supply failing, uh, either way I need to clean up all this dust buildup. I need to get it off. So I'm going to disconnect this computer, take it outside and blow the dust out of it. I'll set this down so you can see. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just turn on my blower. Clean it out. Let's see if I can reach down in there. Whenever you're cleaning out the computer, it's a good idea to keep the fans from spinning too fast, so if I hit this with a little bit of air, it'll start spinning. You don't want it to spin too fast, though. So what I generally do is either reach in and hold the fan, or with this I can reach in, kind of put it between the blades. I'll also get in here 
This is the power supplies fan. I'm basically just going to do short bursts so it doesn't spin too fast. Okay, that's pretty good. And the other thing on this computer, it's got a little video card with a fan here that I'm going to reach and hold. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to stand it up and kind of do it like this to give the bits a chance to work their way out. Okay, that's pretty good. As many computers as I clean out, having one of these is certainly worth it. It's a DataVac. You can get it on Amazon. I'll put a, a link to buy it in the description of the video. I think it's somewhere around $45. Very useful. Cheaper in the long run than buying the canned air. Those things have gotten expensive. Okay. So the cooler's nice and clean. The next thing I'm going to check is the power supply. I'm going to take off its 24-pin power cable going to the motherboard, and that is this little guy right here. And to take this off, you need to hold in on this little lever while you pull up. So you kind of squeeze it and just kind of rock it back and forth to get it loosened up. There we go. And the other part I need is this little guy right down here. And it's the same deal. You have to hold the little lever in while you pull up. Okay. I'll grab my power supply tester. This goes in one end. And this in the other. And these can only go in one way. They're keyed, so you can't get them in upside down. Get in there good. Okay. And I'll plug in the power cable to the power supply. All right, so this is showing me the top numbers are what the value should be. The bottom numbers are what's actually happening. So on all the 12 volts, they're actually reading 11.9. So that's an indication that uh, it may be a problem with the power supply. If the readings are really out of spec, if it was 11.8 or 11.7, this power supply tester would beep and flash the numbers at me to let me know there's something really wrong. But this is enough uh, to indicate to me that it could very well be a problem with the power supply. All right. Let's turn it off. Let's unplug it. Take these off. So this computer is, I think, seven or eight years old at this point. Another thing I'm going to do is take off this CPU heatsink and replace the thermal compound. How you do this is different for each kind of CPU cooler, but generally they're held in by screws. Just kind of get in there and unscrew it. Pop off. it up and the fan has a cable going to the motherboard which I'll just lift up on and it'll come out all right so on the bottom it's got some thermal compounds see some on the, the heat sink and on the CPU looks a little bit dry though I'll get a 
paper towel and some new thermal compound. So I just want to rub off what's there and it is pretty dry. Again, this may not be the cause of the, uh, the, the powering down, but since I'm in here, it's a good idea to do anyway. I'm also going to be assuming I can get this working consistently, uh, upgrading the Windows Vista to Windows 7 at least. If not, hopefully, I might take it up to Windows 10. And before I do that, after I get it working consistently, not powering down the way that it is right now, I'll be uh, testing the hard drive to make sure it's okay, because it is likely the original that came in this computer. You can expect to get about five years of life out of a hard drive. You know, they can fail in two, two years, and I've seen them last 20. You never know when your hard drive is going to fail on you. It's important to keep backups of your data. I'm basically just doing the same thing down on the power, on the processor, just rubbing off the old thermal compound. What I'm doing is I'm, as I'm rubbing it, I'm moving to a clean part of the paper towel. And as you go along, you get less and less compound off the surface until it's just about gone. And it doesn't have to be perfectly clean. If you want to really get it clean, you can use 91% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol on this. And they even make some more hardcore... Uh, thermal compound cleaners that you can get, but in my experience, just getting in here and getting the majority off is fine. Okay. So the thermal compound, well, there's lots of ways to do this. Some people say, you know, put it on there and spread it out with a card or some kind of uh, piece of paper. Other people say make an X shape on it. Some people do a line. Uh, what I generally do is just put a, a pea-sized dot in the middle. And when I put the cooler back on, what will happen is, as I tighten it down, that dot of thermal compound will spread out to evenly cover the CPU. I'll just start screwing this down. And what I do is just get each corner started at first into the holes. And to make sure that the compound spreads out evenly, I'll tighten down each screw just a little bit at a time. So I'll count the number of turns for each corner. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And just go around. Okay, that got tight. Come over here. That's tight. That's tight. And that's tight. So that's so like just about all connectors in a computer, they're keyed so they can only go in one way. There's a little slot that a piece of plastic down here goes into. If you try and put it in backwards, it just won't fit. So you can't put anything backwards and damage anything. There we go. So I'm also going to replace the power supply while I'm at it. Bring this up onto my lap. Okay. I need to disconnect all of the power supply cables from the various components. So I'll unplug the one going to the DVD drive. 
Looks like some of them are on the other side of this case. I'll have to flip it over. But let's see. Already disconnected the ones to the motherboard. Okay. So there's connectors going in right there, which are unusual. Let me take the other side of this case off so I can see what's going on. Slide it off. Okay, what's going on here? So it is, this is the back of the hard drive. I'll pull that off. This is going into a little adapter that goes to something else that probably, it was more than likely a uh, an external drive. So we'll just leave that there and push this through. Okay, so let's turn it back over. Okay, so that should be... There's another one of those little adapters. Disconnect that. All right, so that's all the cables. The power supplies are usually held in by four screws at the back. Whenever you're undoing the screws, just try and get the ones from the four corners. You'll very often see a few other screws in here, but just pay attention to where the case is around the side and get the screws that are actually holding in the power supply. Okay, and generally it just kind of slides out at this point. Yeah. On some computers, down at the bottom, there'll be a little tab that's holding it in that you kind of push down, and that allows it to come off. Okay, so power supply. I'm fairly sure that's the cause. Let's see. Set this down and go get a replacement power supply. this right back in where the other one was. If I look on the back here, it doesn't look like it's going to line up perfectly. These two screws up here are okay and that one's okay, but this case has a little bit of an unusual little protrusion there that's going to be slightly covering up the power connection on the power supply. So what I'm going to do is just not put in a screw there. I'm going to put in a screw in there, there, and there. That'll hold it, and that should be enough for me to still be able to plug in the power cable. Okay. I'm going to get each screw started in the hole before I tighten any of them down. No big deal. I could find a power supply that actually fits this case, but I have a feeling it would be very expensive and just not required. It'll be fine. So, 
a lot of power supplies will have this. Uh, this is a 20 pin connector and that's an extra four. Older computers or some just lower powered computers will only use a 20 so the power supplies are usually made to where you can take four of them off and these either clip on or in this case this one kind of slides in. And, and while putting this on it will only go in one way but the, uh, the thing that prompts you as to which way it goes in this little extra bit of plastic sticking out and this little tab here I call it different things every time tab, lever, whatever it's the thing that you when you're taking it off you squeeze to allow that little bit to come up and release Just align it with the, uh, the plastic on the connector and push it's in Okay, let's see. That's a PCI Express power cable, which we're not going to be needing. The video card in here is fairly low power. Just going to kind of put that right up there. Let's see, we're going to need one of these going. So this little connector right here and this these again just like every other connector have a little pin to make sure that you can't go in backwards this uh, little bit right there fits into a matching piece on the other side this if I remember right has to kind of go through there to connect to another adapter this is a Molex connector. You see this on some fans, none in this case, and older drives. And that's a floppy drive connector, which hardly ever comes in handy. I'm just going to stick these right up here. There's a SATA power connection, which I'm going to plug into the DVD drive. There's an extra set of connection, which I'm just going to place right up there. And this goes to the motherboard as well. I'm just going to fish it down there. It only goes in one way. It'll push down and it'll clip in. Okay. All right, let's look on the other side. Did I not put, I put a Molex through, okay. It's back over. I could have sworn I put through a, a SATA. Oh well, put through a Molex. One of these up here is a SATA. Yep, that'll work. Stick that through. Turn it back over. Okay, so that's connecting to that adapter for the external drive, but I still need one for this. Okay, well, I'll get it right eventually. Let's see. I need another SATA going through there for the hard drive. One of these had two SATAs, didn't it? Those are Molex. Where's my extra SATA connection? There's just one. And some Molex. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's put the Molex through there and I'll go get a Molex to SATA adapter. We'll make it work. So 
this little adapter lets you connect to a Molex connector and then plug in a SATA. So it's kind of get these out of the way. up some. Just gonna stick these right up here. There's actually little clips that they can go into so they're not flopping around. Alright. Plug the power back in. on the power supply's main switch and hit the power button. Of course it's important to also plug in the monitor to the graphics card and I suppose it would be nice if I had a keyboard connected too. Alright, it looks like we're uh, booting up into Windows Vista. So what I'm going to do is just let the computer run for a period of time and see if it still powers off. So I've had the computer running for about three hours and there's been no unexpected power offs. So it was definitely the power supply causing that issue. Now while we were troubleshooting that, we were also checking to see if maybe it was the CPU overheating that was causing the system to shut off. I blew out a bunch of dust from the CPU cooler and I also removed the cooler and replaced its thermal compound with fresh compound. So I thought we'd come in here and test and see what the temperatures are now compared to what they were before. So the idle temperatures are about the same in the low to mid 50s. Let's try it under 100% CPU load. Before the temperature was spiking up to the mid to high 70s. After a few minutes under full CPU load with the CPU at 100%, the temperatures are now in the low to sometimes mid 60s. And that's quite a bit of an improvement before they were in the mid 70s going up to almost 80 degrees. So that's a good result from blowing dust out of the CPU cooler and replacing the thermal compound with fresh new compound. I'll go ahead and stop the test. Thanks for watching.